the concept of uh, animal welfare were long considered to be unscientific and based solely on cultural considerations that link humans to animals. This approach has not been refuted by the many studies clearly showing that the debates and subsequent regulation could be backed up by some science-based arguments. Yet today, beyond the emotional or social approach prevalent in recent years, new considerations are leading to a fresh perspective on animal welfare issues. Indeed, at a time when environmental issues are becoming crucial, there is a growing awareness that animal welfare is consistent with sustainable livestock development. And this will undoubtedly contribute to the development of new, more animal-friendly practices. Furthermore, in many countries, consumers are not longer concerned solely about the price of products and the safety of their food. They are also interested in how food is produced, and especially how animals are used, raised, transported, and slaughtered. Lastly, in a manner that is still quite tentative, but with a trend that shows no sign of weakening, the inclusion of animal welfare requirements in negotiations on bilateral trade agreements relating to animals and animal products is another factor that will foster better implementation of international standards. In this context, it's even more vital to have standards that are clear, science-based, and enforceable, and also to disseminate knowledge and concrete examples that will help to ensure ownership on this concept and their application. On the other hand, it's also crucial to maintain a frank and constructive dialogue between stakeholders to promote mutual understanding. Animal welfare is not a matter of one side processing the truth and the other being in your words. The subject is far too complex to be reduced to a conflict between two opposing factions. Nevertheless, it's important to remember that the producers or the owners are the primary actors in ensuring the welfare of their animals. They also have, unfortunately, to contend with constant economic constraints, sanitary risks that are difficult to control, and living conditions that are often precarious for them and their families. Ladies and gentlemen, this fourth OIE conference is an important gateway to discuss the future development of animal welfare science, including the emerging technologies used for their assessment to ensure that OIE standards are the most relevant. It is also important to highlight how the strengthening of our programs on behalf of member countries can help to achieve better implementation of standards. And these specific issues of the implementation of the OIE standards will be certainly more seriously addressed in the forthcoming months by the OIE. This conference will also encourage our partners to be part of the challenge of the implementation of these standards. And finally, we will discuss a global strategy based on experiences and the outcomes of regional strategies already implemented. That is why, dear participants, on your behalf, I would like to thank the Government of Mexico notably the Secretariat of Agriculture, Livestock, Rural Development, Fisheries and Food, Zagarba, the Government of the State of Jalisco for their generosity and hospitality, and a special thanks to the National Services of Animal and Plant Health, Quality and Food Safety, Senasica, for their welcome and their generous support for the organization of the conference. With your support, 
mission. <laughs> I'm confident that the conference will be a success. And now, ladies and gentlemen, participants, I count on your active participation during the discussion or within the working group so that this OI conference becomes yours. Thank you.